It's being billed as the event that will help regenerate one of the world's oldest monarchies. But next week's royal nuptials have also reopened an old debate about whether Australia should sever ties with the Queen and become a republic. As the Queen turned 85 this week, Australia was celebrating. We're more than 17,000 kilometres from Buckingham Palace, but these well-wishers are fiercely loyal to our constitutional monarchy. I think that the majority of people don't want a change, uh, and with uh, Prince William's two visits to Australia, it, it's shown a connection to the monarchy, particularly for younger generations. Here in Canberra, a smaller, more subdued gathering is underway of proud Republicans organising a mail-out to their newest recruits. As royal wedding fever sweeps the country, some may think now is not the time to bring up the debate of a republic. But... We don't see it as a threat. In fact, in, in many ways, I would rather have the debate about an Australian republic, which is generated by this sort of wedding, out in the open, when the British monarchy is, if you like, full throttle. Since the engagement of Prince William and Catherine Middleton, Republicans have seen a spike in membership of about 5%. It's a small blip, but evidence that not everyone is gushing. Despite the popular publicity surrounding Prince William's visit to Australia, they say this marriage is the perfect opportunity to revisit the issue. But I don't think he changes the argument. Australian national identity cannot fit well with a British monarch. British values, British heritage, British location. Republicans, led by Malcolm Turnbull, have travelled this road before. Surely we are good and great enough to have one of our own as our head of state. In 1999, a referendum saw 58% of Australians vote against a republic. The Republican movement is the first to admit their cause wasn't helped by a split over what form the republic would take. So too the confusing wording on the ballot paper. Defenders of the monarchy say the system simply isn't broken. Within that Westminster system there is leadership beyond politics. The Queen is above politics. The Governor-General and the Governors are above politics and people know that. Politically, our leaders' positions are clear. Uh, I obviously am a Republican. I believe that this nation should be a Republic. Support for the monarchy uh, is just second nature. Yet it's the Greens who are acting now. They've already introduced a bill in the Senate to hold a plebiscite on the issue. But they'll have to win over a disinterested public first. Support for the Republic peaked at 66% during the referendum 13 years ago. Today, that support level has dropped to just 58%. Monikers say it's not a burning issue. The great majority of the population don't lie awake at night wondering who their head of state is or, and whether we're about to become a Republic. While on a psychological note, others say it's time to cut the British apron strings for the sake of a more mature identity. I've likened Australia to, to uh, the 28-year-old um, young adult who still hasn't quite managed to leave home and become independent in their own right. While the Republic debate isn't making headlines just yet, it's clear both sides are in the fight for the long haul. Peter Jane Madam, World News Australia. And Peter Jane Madam will be covering the royal wedding for SBS from London next week.